Hello, Stephen. Hello. I believe you're going to take us through a little bit of your memories of the ZX Spectrum and uh, show us you've done a little bit of coding as well. Do you want to start off with showing it to us? When did you first get one of these cheeky little bad boys? So I got my first ZX Spectrum as a Christmas present uh, when I was five and I was using it and its upgrades for the next ten years. Really? Yeah. For the next ten years? And that's quite a long lifespan in oh. terms of... Uh, Obviously computer hardware in this day and age. Yeah, I obviously started out playing all the classic games like uh, Manic Miner and Jet Set Willy, uh, and then discovered slowly over the period of time that uh, you can actually write games yourself on the machine. So this bring back a lot of memories, a lot of nostalgia being triggered at the moment. Uh, yes, <laughs> it does. It's 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 great to get my hands on the actual machine again. Now, what sort of language would you have coded on on one of these, Stephen? Because I imagine it's not going to be C sharp or no um, professional games. Uh, Developers had to program in the machine code that that actually run the CPU. You could actually run machine code on the ZX yeah. Spectrum. But uh, Mr. Clive Sinclair kindly provided us with a language called BASIC, which was slightly simpler no. that we could write our own games with. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you only have 48k on a ZX Spectrum to play with. That's quite a restrictive uh, well, you have environment. A, you you actually have less than that. Really? Uh, because 16k of that goes to write the operating system and another 6k goes to write the screen memory and there's some other bits and pieces you're realistic you've got about 30 20 30 something like that that's so you, that must have instilled some very good habits in you uh, yes you learn to program uh, within your means let's but, say but I don't believe the error handling was particularly it wasn't particularly informative the errors and things that you no, get when I you mean, actually did make mistakes basically what you got it. when you looked at the ZX Spectrum for the first time was this flashing K keyword and when right. you press the key, you try and type something, but suddenly a word would appear. Uh, and uh, the error handling you mentioned, that's all you get. It's my hate symbol for my childhood, is, is, is the flashing question mark. Because uh, that's all it will ever tell you if anything goes wrong. So yes, we have a flashing K cursor. That means that whenever you press a key, a word appears. Now on the keyboard there, I noticed that each, it's a very small machine, so it's actually quite still quite sleek and minimalist looking even for this day and age it's and it's got a lot of functions for each key there's like about three functions mm -hmm. for each key there it says Stephen yes. uh, there's more than that there's actually at least four just look at that five there you go up there five. Um, now it's a very pretty machine isn't it it's all, it all, is. all very colourful um, yes you'll notice if you can see the keyboard layout first of all the lack of arrow keys and secondly the lack of a delete key did that just do your head in so, not having a delete key and arrow keys back yes. in the day so uh, yes, delete, shift and zero. The arrow keys are here, shift and five to go left, shift and eight to go right. Now, this coding, and it almost feels like you were just shackled as a developer back in the day. Yes. Do you think that these, these practices that you learnt, the developers today, maybe ten years younger than yourself, think they're worse off, worse coders than you because they didn't grow up, record, uh, didn't grow up coding in that kind of environment, in that kind of restrictive 48k or less than environment I, I i think it's a good character building exercise to, to develop on a machine such as this uh, there are modern chips and things which are equally restrictive in their own way um uh, and i'm well prepared for developing minimalist environments that's certainly true okay well you've talked the talk steve but we've left you on your own for about half an hour earlier to see if all those old memories have come flooding back and if you could maybe knock us up a a little program or do something so what have you what have you done in that half hour yes well you'll see as i grind my way out to the top of it how slow this machine really is uh if you can just see it here as a as a greater than symbol it tells me which line i'm currently at so look at that how slow this it is, is scrolling up and down to get to the top of my code no mouse no cursor and no. You, you didn't even have inter internet access on these things did you steve no no internet so basically that's that you've just seen my code uh, everything was done by line numbers. Uh, you I'm could only have most 10,000 lines and there was no renumbering. So you had to make sure that you used the best of what you got. Now, Steve, I've noticed here that you've, you've gone up in increments of five. Is that so that you can insert lines between lines if you, if you make a mistake? Uh, it is. If I forget something and I need to print more stuff, I can certainly do that by, by chucking in another line. So line 11 I've just added there. Uh, if I if I want to move it, I can move it, but I have to edit it by pressing Shift and One, changing the line number, things which makes a copy of it, and I then delete the old line by just typing in eleven and pressing Enter. 
and it's only 12 left, you know. That sounds quite frustrating. Uh, it's, it's quite frustrating in by modern standards, but, but obviously I didn't know anything you, better. Yeah. So I do, I, I do my stuff. Um, I've written a game called Chasing AD, right. where your protagonist is represented by one of the graphical symbols you can get by pressing Shift and 9, changing the cursor to the graphics thing and pressing some number keys and, and a whole bunch of weird symbols appear. Uh, so you are our hero, the check yeah. symbol. Just a two-dimensional little yeah. couple of squares, yeah. couple of pixels. AD, this was, this was the symbol that I felt best represented yourself. A zero. It's yeah. a capital O. Yes, yeah, so you'll notice the zero has a very strong strike to ah, okay, it. Okay, so it's a, a no, not a zero. That's the zero, so it's, yeah. So it's slightly less offensive than the... Uh... Yes. So I do some setup work here, and then I enter my main loop where, as you'll see, to you... check for those famous... Spectrum keyboards. Do you controls. think you could program a 3D engine on a Spectrum, Steve? People did. I actually did once. Um, did you really? Are you just telling us a couple of stories now? Well, Steve? let's say it was let's say it was two and a half D. I, I did write an isometric game based on the yeah. trapdoor cartoons when I was a kid, which was one of my one of my favourite pro projects. When I mean, it ran like a dog because it did too much stuff, but I mean it did look pretty good. For uh, what Elite it was. was a 3D environment, wasn't it? And that was um, yes, I mean games like Elite that did that mesh graphics was probably the best you were ever going to get. I think. I mean there some uh, what was the game? I can't remember now, but there were some games. Torsetti. Academy, Torsetti 2, things like that. They did have some quite good sort of monochromatic 3D engines sort of later on in the life cycle of the Spectrum. So yes, the controls for this game is QAO and P. Anyone who's ever played a, a the, game on the key? The old in-key command there as well. So. The in-key command, yeah, it's the, allows you to check for it. And this just checks that you haven't gone out the screen, okay. saves the old space, puts a new one in. Between lines 205 and about 240, when we get to it in a minute, is my incredibly complicated artificial intelligence engine. Okay. Which is basically done by random numbers. Rund, Rund is the random number generator. It's like, yeah, if a random number happens, you go this way, fine. Um, it's not bad, it's quite impressive for half an hour. So it's obviously all come flooding back to you quite quickly. Uh, it's surprising how quickly uh, all of the I guess keyboard commands came back because there is a lot of pressing shift the best basically. part of a decade's worth of coding on a Spectrum yeah and even though it was longer than that because uh, I mean when I moved to the ZX Spectrum Plus it fixed most of these keyboard issues oh right so do you want to show us the computer game running now? yeah so let's see what you've done if I get rid of that six to run the game press R and yep. enter look at that hey. chasing AD yeah Brr, arg and you've got me running around the screen, now you're controlling yeah, yeah. me, and there's... I've got... I've got oh, no, I'm re free moving, and yeah, you're controlling this that, other... That's me here. The, Q, pressing Q, pressing A. The hunter. Pressing P, pressing O. So I can move around like that. Uh, you just run around Could, randomly. Are you going to get me? I am going to get you. I'm going to chase you now. Uh, this is as fast as I can make this that game is, run. And I can hear that the sound's actually coming from the Spectrum uh, itself. It's not coming from the screen, the yes. ticking noise. Um, along with the error messages, the, the Spectrum sound engine was probably one of the sort of most famous famous parts of the machine. And I like the... Uh, Two variable not grrr found. at the end there and the, the exclamation marks to make the game more seem slightly more exciting yeah. than it actually is. Oh, oh, nearly had you then. Nearly had you. Oh. I don't know, is it, hey, oh you've done it, and you I have win. bummed AD, well done, game over, incredible. Uh, zero OK success message means that everything run according to plan. Brilliant, well thank you Steve for sharing your memories of the ZX Spectrum and taking us through a, a few of the old coding techniques. That's a pleasure.